operating comprehension, the construction integration model. So I wanted to start this discussion off by backing up for a second and considering our overarching goal this summer. The goal with all of these literacy instruction strategies from, from Morelian is to help our students with their metacognition skills. That is, to teach them skills that require them to think about how we as humans think. As librarians, when we consciously consider how our students learn, how they organize incoming information, and how they retrieve existing information, we can promote strategies to help them mature in these areas. These strategies, after being demonstrated and used enough times, will start to become unconscious habits among our students. They'll be able to encounter a new text, taking into account what they already know about it. They'll be able to better organize their mental representation of the information, which provides for better access and recall later. So these strategies are in effect training their brains. So with that in mind, let's briefly review what we learned from our first reading comprehension model, the structure building model. Gernsbacher's structure building model was important for the way in which it conceptualizes the organization of incoming information that when we encounter information for the first time, we lay a foundation upon which to store this new information. We learned that mapping is when we place that new information on top of the foundation. And then as subsequent information comes in, if it's new but similar to something we already know, then we build substructures close by in the process of shifting. We talked about how we enhance information by adding relevant incoming information on top of prior knowledge. We also suppress information that we encounter in the text if it is unrelated to the relevant topic at hand. So in all, the structure building model gives us a good way to think about the way our minds organize incoming information and store it. The next model that we will talk about adds another angle to our understanding of the processes behind this summer's literacy instruction strategies. The construction integration model speaks directly to the inferencing and predicting strategies that we cover in this week's chapter of the Morelian textbook. So wait, before we get into the specifics of the construction integration model, let's talk some more about these concepts of predicting and inferencing, which are two closely related terms. In predicting, students are making educated guesses about the upcoming events in the story, or in some cases even the upcoming words that follow. They do this based on the text's cues, and they are able to make predictions in large part because of their background knowledge, which allows them to follow the events in a narrative and know what to expect next. With inferencing, students are making their own meanings from the text. They do this by using cues from the text, but they also pull in their background knowledge to explain what's going on in the text. Inferencing requires a higher level of synthesis than predicting. Let me demonstrate this with an example. In your textbooks, Morelian has a set of sample statements and questions that can be used as prompts. Statements such as, my guess is that, or I knew this would happen next because, are more of predictions because they're trying to get students to make educated guesses as to the upcoming linear chain of events. On the other hand, statements such as, what was the author trying to say in this story? are more of inferences, because here we are trying to get students to take in all of the events of the text, synthesize this with their background knowledge, and give an opinion about something that is not simply a linear progression. This requires a higher thought process. So yes, it's kind of a subtle difference in a way, but I wanted to talk about this because the construction integration model really delves into the process of making inferences. Let me show you what I mean. The construction integration model was proposed by Dr. Walter Kinch in 1988. Dr. Kinch works at the University of Colorado at Boulder, and he is still publishing his work on cognition. Kinch's model of reading comprehension, called the CI model for short, was the earliest of the seven prominent models of reading comprehension studied today, and it has been very influential to other researchers in the area of comprehension. Kinch's early work was groundbreaking in that it treated the processes behind reading comprehension as much more than just the relationships between explicitly mentioned information printed in the text. Kinch understood the importance of the referenced and implied ideas behind the content printed in the text, ideas which activate one's subconscious thoughts. This is what we mean by inferencing, in which relevant background knowledge is brought into the mental representation when one reads text. 
So the word construction in the title of the model is referring to the process of constructing knowledge by activating all knowledge that relates to the content that one just read. This content includes the activation of both relevant and irrelevant memory nodes, and it's important to consider that this is an automatic process. When the reader encounters text, the activation of one's knowledge just happens without consciously thinking about it. Integration, the other half of this model, refers to the idea that our minds are a network, and once activation begins in the construction phase, the activation starts to spread. This spreading of the activation across the neural network is what Kinch called integration, and, kind of similar to Gernsbacher, Kinch believed that the integration process fosters greater activation for concepts that have lots of links to other concepts, whereas there is deactivation of concepts that have fewer links to other concepts in the mental model. So that's kind of the basic mechanics behind the activation of knowledge in the form of neural nodes. But Kinch's CM model takes our understanding of text processing even further. One of the main tenets of the CI model is that when we read a sentence, our mind processes this text at three levels. The first level is the surface structure. This level is simply the words in the text and how they relate to each other at a syntactic level. So back in video clip three, we learned about the four different stages of early literacy, and we talked about the last of those stages, which was the consolidated alphabetic stage, where we learned some of the more sophisticated grammar rules of our language. So this is kind of like Kinch's surface structure level, where we read a sentence and our minds just initially understand it at the grammatical level that, okay, these words are in the correct order according to the English language and there is a cohesion in the structure. So this is a really superficial level because at this point we aren't trying to comprehend the information being conveyed by these words. But even though we aren't actively comprehending here, this level is still important. Think of this level as kind of the first test that printed text must pass in order to go on to the next levels of comprehension. So in passing this test, our brains have determined, okay, these words and their structure are familiar to me, this is a language I can understand, and so now I'll take the time to process it for, process it for meaning. Because if you encounter text in a language you do not know, for me, say, Icelandic, then automatically your brain will reject this at the surface structure level. You visually are not familiar with these words or their syntactic structure, and therefore your brain is not going to waste its cognitive processing time on them. The next level of text comprehension is the text base level. Kinch's description of the text base level gets a little complicated because his area of research is discourse analysis, which is a research approach to analyzing written language and honestly gets a little in the weeds of language study versus where we are going in this class. But the short of it is that at the text base level, Kinch describes the basic unit of text processing as a proposition. So a proposition is equal to one complete idea. And an example of this would be in the sentence, Lucy wore a red dress. We have two propositions, Lucy wore dress and dress red. These are each two complete ideas or propositions. And the most important thing to stress here is that these are the complete ideas found directly in the text. We are just reading the text for what it is and getting these two simple ideas. So readers have this active process in that at the text-based level, they're just taking in the text and bringing it down into propositions as a way to make meaning. When readers break it down in this way, they're getting to the basic meaning found in a sentence. And as you can see from the example with Lucy and her dress, this meaning is freed from the syntactic structure of the sentence. In this way, the reader can get to what are truly the most important concepts in this sentence. And this is just the first step in comprehending the text. At the next level of representation, the situation model, we kick up the comprehension considerably. We integrate the basic meanings derived directly from the text base, and now we add that to our individual background knowledge of what we just read. So the situation model is constantly changing, right, as we read new text. And what sort of situation model that readers build at any moment depends on their amount of relevant background knowledge. 
It also depends on their initial goals in reading the text, which is another reason why it's so important to briefly introduce a text and put readers in the right frame of mind to process that type of text. So in the situation model, we are making inferences about what we are reading. Kinch was really into these inferences, which is why we are talking about this model in class. He wrote about these inferences to a really detailed level, and I wanted to talk briefly about each, kind, each type of uh, inferences to get us thinking about the level of processing that is going on behind the scenes. So Kinch viewed these inferences, which build the situation model, as kind of like battling along two levels. So the first is whether the inferences were automatic or controlled, and then the other is whether the inferences were retrieved versus generated. So let's break down each of these sets of inferences. So with automatic or controlled, Kinch was looking at whether an activation of memory happened because it was primed by the text, and this would be an automatic inference, or whether the activation was purposely activated by the text itself. This is a controlled inference. So when events are primed, you experience something that activates a memory. However, this memory is not yet at the forefront of your consciousness. It's not until you, you have some sort of additional stimuli that the primed information surfaces into your conscious mental representation. It's my understanding that a lot of sensory input, which we already talked about in chapter 4, has this priming effect, which makes it so powerful in our teaching. The second argument is whether an inference is retrieved from memory or generated from the text. Inferences that are retrieved directly result from the current context. Inferences that are generated go beyond the information on the text to remind you of something else. In our last video on the structure building model, I talked about inferencing types that were common to all of the major reading comprehension models, and I talked about bridging inferences and associative inferences. And what Kinch calls the retrieved inferences are the same thing as the bridging inferences. Here you're making inferences based on what you just read in the text. And Kinch's generated inferences are the same thing as the associative inferences. This is the, the text is requiring you to mentally generate information beyond what is just printed there before you. It is pulling in your experiences and your background knowledge to synthesize the events of the passage. Okay, so if you felt like you were getting in the weeds there, you were. Um, for our purposes, it doesn't matter so much the precise type of inferencing that's going on as much as what all of this inferencing really leads to in the learning going on in our libraries. So a few things here. First off, Kinch explained that the text space and situation model shouldn't, or, I'm sorry, they should be viewed as a sort of two sides of the same coin. In that when we encounter a sentence in text, we process the same text at two levels concurrently. We don't break these into two separate uh, mental representations. Rather, all of this processing gives us a fuller understanding of the individual idea at the same time. Secondly, it is important to understand the basic mechanics of the situation model in that it integrates what is right before you on the page with your prior knowledge. If we do not integrate the new information with the old, then this will lead to encapsulated knowledge, which is information that is only retrieved during a specific memory. Um, this is like rote memorization, and in its worst form, it's uh, teaching to the test. Children are not really learning for the long term here. They must integrate it with their prior knowledge in order to hold on to it, retrieve it, and do something with it later, such as synthesis and analysis. Okay, so that was a lot to think about. If you've already read through chapter 6, that's awesome, but I would encourage you to perhaps just kind of go back and skim through the chapter in the context of what we've just talked about. Also think about the organization structure presented by the structure building model. Mull all of this over, and then let's discuss it on our discussion boards. I'll talk to you later.